let's move into placing futures and options orders directly from an order entry ticket. One thing that you'll quickly realize is there are several ways to place orders within the Zaner 360 platform. We've already showed you that you can place futures orders directly from the chart. Now we're going to go into placing options and futures orders using the standard futures order entry box. You might remember in the first section when we originally set up our workspace, we had the futures order entry box in the lower left hand side. I prefer it to be directly over my quote board so that I can easily see quotes as I'm placing trades, but that's up to you. You can move it to whichever area you think is going to work best for you. You might recall in a previous section that I mentioned you can easily place orders on anything that's in your quote board, whether it's a future or an option, by simply clicking on it, populating an order entry ticket, and then toggling the specifics. For example, you choose buy or sell, you can change your quantity, and of course you could type this in as well. You choose an order type, you flag it as a day or good till canceled, and when you're ready you hit transmit. If you want to clear the screen and start over, you hit new order. Something that can be relatively helpful is a release order. In other words, you can choose when your order actually is submitted. For example, if you wanted to buy the E-mini S&P on a limit at 21.25, but you didn't want that order to work immediately, you wanted it to occur after the release of an economic report or some sort of specific event, or maybe you're just looking to play the last hour of the day, you could choose a release time. You can simply toggle up or down by choosing a time and toggling. Or again, you could simply type it in. You can also choose when you want the order to cancel. So if you want to work this order the last 10 minutes of the day, you could specify that. If you have nothing chosen, the order will go in immediately. If you do not know the symbol of the future or option that you'd like to trade, you can do a search. For example, if we wanted to trade gold, we could type in the word gold and it would list several options. And by options, I mean various futures contracts. If you wanted to trade an option, it's a little more difficult. You're going to have to have some sort of knowledge of symbols or at least know how to search for them. So the key here is all option symbols have an O in front of it, an O for option. We'll use our 2200 example in the E-mini S&P. The symbol is O-E-S, which makes sense. The symbol for an S&P future is E-S. So O-E-S, Z for December, a space, a C for a call, a P for a put, and then the strike price. Now as you become more comfortable with this, this will come naturally to you, but it'll take a little while to sink in. If you don't know the symbol for an option, it's relatively easy as well. But one easy way to do it would be to load the E-mini S&P future, and then we can click on this link. This link will pull up an option chain, and from there we can view quotes and find symbols. We'll go over option chains in a later segment. Entering an order for an option using the order entry platform is similar to a future. You simply enter the symbol, you choose buy or sell, and you'll notice as if you have limit order chosen, your price will toggle as you change from buy or sell. Well, that's because a buy order will automatically be placed at the ask, and a sell order will automatically be placed at the bid. Of course, you don't have to accept that. You can toggle. If you toggle up or down, it'll change your price accordingly. This is how you would enter a standard order, meaning a simple futures contract or a simple option. If you'd like to do something a little more complicated, like a one sends the other, it's a contingent order, meaning if one order is filled, I want to send an order to do something else. A lot of traders use this that they refer to it as a bracket. For instance, if you wanted to buy an E-mini S&P on a limit at 21.25, then, once that order is filled, you might want to place an OCO order, which is an one cancels the other order, meaning a limit order is placed above the market to take a profit, and a stop loss order is placed below the market to prevent your losses from getting out of hand. So you could name your OCO prices. So in other words, your sell limit would be above the market at 2127, or wherever you desire it to be. Your sell stop 
might be a 21, 24. And again, you choose the quantity, whether you want it to be good till cancel or day, the release time. And when you're ready, you choose transmit, and it'll allow you to review the order to make sure it is what you want it to be. We're looking to buy one E-mini S&P at 21.25 with a sell order at 21.28 and a stop order at 21.24. The last two orders will not be placed unless your first one is filled. There are a couple convenience buttons at the bottom of the platform. You'll notice if you hit buy bracket, it'll give you a buy limit or a buy market with a sell stop and a sell limit. If you hit sell bracket, It'll do the opposite. It'll give you a sell order, and then if that order is filled, it'll place a buy stop and a buy limit. You can also save a particular setup as a template. So, for example, if you do a particular trade in a particular quantity often, instead of entering it in each and every time, you can save it as a template. Just choose Save, name it, and then it'll be there for you to toggle to later on. So that is a one sends the other order or a contingency order. But sometimes you want to place a symbol bracket and that's a one cancels the other. So if we choose OCO as our type, it'll give us the ability to place a two-legged order. And if one side is filled, the other will be canceled. More often than not, traders use OCO orders as brackets similar to the example that we just showed you. But it might be a trader that places buy stop and sell stop in a market, thinking if the market goes above a certain level, it'll continue to go higher, or if it goes below a certain level, it'll continue to go lower. And of course, if they're filled on one, they don't want to be filled on the other side of it. So that type of order would be a one cancels the other order. For example, this trader might want to go long if the market gets to 21.28, but he might want to go short if it goes to 21.24. And of course, we can transmit it and verify it. And you'll notice we did execute this time. We did place the order. So let's look at our active orders window. And you'll see the order working there. One more feature in the futures order entry window is the complex order. And this is for traders that are looking to trade future spreads. Unfortunately, this platform does not have the ability to accept option spread orders. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But future spread traders can enter orders on this platform. For example, if they wanted to trade a spread in the E-mini S&P, they could simply start typing in ES, and it'll start filtering in different spreads that involve the ES. Likewise, if you wanted to trade a corn spread, you could start typing in ZC, and it'll give you all of the exchange verified spreads. Now, it's very possible that there is a spread that you want to trade that might not populate automatically. And generally, you can start typing in the symbol and locate it on your own. If you have any problems, you can always contact us and we'll give you the exact symbol. There are a couple things that I'd like to point out in regards to once you place a trade, how to monitor the working order, how to modify the working order, and how to follow everything that's going on in your account. For example, if we want to purchase an E-mini S&P, we simply load the order ticket with the correct symbol. We have the option of a market order or we could choose a stop order or a limit order, whatever it is that we're looking to do. We'll assume we're buying on a limit, the platform will automatically populate the price for you. So if you're trying to buy, it'll populate the ask price. If you're trying to sell, it'll populate the bid price. And you'll notice if you toggle between buy and sell, you see the price in here is changing, and that's because it's representing the bid and the ask. So it's assuming that you're buying the ask and selling the bid. Now we'll go ahead and uh, place an order to buy, and of course it's going to give us confirmation ticket. If we don't want the confirmation ticket, if we want it to go directly to the exchange without any delays, we check this box. But we're going to keep that there. I like to have the confirmation. The order was filled. And when it is filled, you will receive confirmation of that with all the details. And again, if you do not want this alert, you simply check this box and hit close. Now that I've closed it, you'll notice that I have an open position. And in the open positions window, it's going to follow our profit and loss and it's going to tell us what our net position is. We started with no positions. We purchased one, so our net position is long one. There's a couple ways we could exit, exit this trade. If we wanted to get out at the market, we could right-click on the position, hit Exit at Market, and you'll notice it's populated everything into the order entry window, and we also just hit Yes. We do want to cancel all existing orders and exit at the market. 
and it takes care of it for you. You can now see we bought one and we sold one, we're flat, and we made or lost nothing. You'll also notice that both of the orders that we just placed are now located in the filled orders. So even though we don't have a position open because we're flat the market, the filled orders window will display any order that we've executed on today's action. So we bought one and we sold one at the same price. Now let's assume that we're going to sell an E-mini S&P at a better price that the market is currently trading. So we'll try to sell one at 21.23. And again, we get confirmation ticket. Once I place this order, it becomes an active order and it's visible on the active order screen. If I wanted to modify this order or cancel the order, I could click on it. And you'll notice when I click on it, the order entry window populates with all the order details and I could change the price. Let's go down to 21.22 and then I hit modify. And it's working at 21.22. You notice that the current price is 21.21, so it has not been filled yet and it won't be filled unless we get to 22 or better. So let's bump, bump it down one more time. Again, I click on it, I change the price, and then I hit modify. As soon as the order is filled, it disappears from the active orders window because it's no longer an active order. It's a filled order. It goes into the filled order entry window. And now we are short one E-mini S&P because we bought one, we sold two, and now our net position is negative one. So it shows our total position is negative one, meaning we're short one because we bought one and we sold two. It'll give us our average price, our total open P&L, and our realized P&L. Remember, the first trade we broke, re broke even, so our realized P&L is zero. If you want more details, you can click on the plus sign. And if you had a multiple trades, if you had 10, 20 trades, uh, you would see your net here, but by clicking this plus sign, you would see all the details of the individual buys and sells. You can also see more detail of your trade by hovering your cursor over the filled order, and you'll notice a window pops up with all the details, order numbers, timestamps, all those sorts of things. You're also going to find your account summary in the upper right-hand corner, assuming that this is how you have your platform set up, and it'll show you your net liquidation value, your profit and loss, and keep in mind these P&L numbers are based on today's session or at least the last login session. So if you keep your computer open for four or five days, it'll actually accumulate those figures. But if you log in and out every day, as most people do, it'll be per session. 